drugs onto an income management system. They'll get most of their welfare put onto a card to cover essential expenses such as rent and food and only be given a small amount of cash. To discuss arguments for and against the proposal, I'm joined in the studio by the Social Services Minister, Christian Porter, and the Shadow Human Services Minister, Linda Burney. Thanks very much to both of you for being in. Very Thank good you. To be here. Christian Porter, what will you consider to be the marks of success for this trial? What would have to be the indicators to enable you to carry on with it? Yeah, so we'll run an evaluation alongside the trials, and of course they're trials, and we want to have it evidence-based to see how they proceed. There'll be a number of things that we'll measure, but essentially we're looking at whether or not the group who are subject to the testing perform better in terms of the number that move into employment and the speed with which they move into employment. So that'll be the central measure. Linda Burney, is that, does that sound like a good plan to you? Well, Labor is not going to support any of the trials um, and we're doing it on the back of very solid advice from many medical experts in the arena and practitioners in the, um, in the addiction and rehabilitation space who are all saying to us that this has been a waste of time and money in other jurisdictions, including New Zealand. I've had a look at that as well. And they're also saying that the punitive measures behind it are not what's needed for people that need this sort of support. I've spoken to people out in uh, Western Sydney uh, an area that I've worked in and know very well. And people are saying that we want jobs and training. There does not need to be this punitive approach um, that is not going to work on the basis of medical advice. So just to unpack that a little bit, Christian Porter, have you consulted medical experts and people who are experts in addiction? Because from what I've seen, uh, they've said Linda Burney's correct about that. Uh, well, look, there's been some experts who haven't been very positive. So the Royal Australian College of Physicians said that they don't think this will work. That was, of course, the same body who said that linking welfare payments to vaccination rates absolutely wouldn't work, and it absolutely did. So they got that 100% wrong. But what we have done is looked across the spectrum uh, and yes, we've looked internationally and what we've done is we've actually learnt internationally from what has been run and we've done something very, very different. And what we're doing here is using the welfare system to effectively mandate treatment. Now, this is not meant to be punitive in any way. So if you test positive a first time, yes, you'll go on to the um, income management and have a limited amount of cash. You can then be tested again and if you test positive a second time, we will, the government, uh, pay for a medical assessment so that you can have a treatment plan devised and then your obligation as part of the conditionality of your welfare is to abide by that treatment program. Now, we think that that is not merely non-punitive, it's a much better approach in terms of trying to identify people with a problem and actually do something about it. So, Linda Burney, how's that punitive? Because, as he's explained, they're trying to push people into treatment. Well, that sounds all very fine. The problem is there is not one additional dollar in the health budget to provide for additional treatment beds, additional programs anywhere in the country, let alone true? Western it's, it's Sydney. Not, it's, not actually, it's not actually um, correct. And the other thing, of course, is that there has been a cut to the, to the um, health budget to almost a billion dollars in the area of rehabilitation. Is that correct? No, th these are actually quite small trials. You'll recall, Lee, that the federal government put $685 million over four years to drug and alcohol treatment, including $300 million specifically for ICE. As part of these trials, we've chosen places with lots of on-the-ground service delivery. Now, we acknowledge that because there will be slight uptake in demand potentially that there could be bottlenecks. We've set aside $10 million specifically to deal with those bottlenecks. But in any event, if there is a waiting list for any individual who has a treatment plan devised, they're not going to be in any way punished for being on a waiting list. Like What we're trying to do is not merely advance the amount of money that's available for the services, but give people a behavioural reason, an incentive to get into those services. And we're using the welfare system as the lever for that. Do you think that will work as an incentive? Well, I, I mean, the evidence is very clear that there is not um, a higher incidence of drug use amongst people that are seeking employment. That's dead wrong, that's, Linda. That's very, very clear. And I, I think the other point to make is that our fear, um, and this is backed up by the experts as well, Lee, is that this measure will actually push for people further to the brink and it will also create homelessness, it will create additional poverty and potentially um, higher rates of crime. Those things need to be resolved. Um, if there is going to be any trial rolled out. And I want to know what the evidence is and why you've chosen um, the Canterbury-Bankstown Canterbury LGA. So yes, just sir. on that issue, and 
some doctors' groups have said this, that there's, they maintain that there's not incidence of higher um, drug use amongst unemployed Australians compared to employed Australians. It's actually just wrong. So the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, which is authoritative on this, says that uh, for groups of unemployed people, the usage of a drug like ICE is 2.5 times more prevalent for those who are employed. And that just, I mean, it just follows our common sense understanding well, of these things. why not invest in rehabilitation instead of targeting people who are needing to use the welfare system at points in their life. But we're doing both of these things. But I think fundamentally, Linda, you ascribe to the view that there's not a problem here, that the use of drugs is not more prevalent. But it's a common sense understanding of a situation that what happens is we know, based on authoritative data, that drug usage is more common amongst those who are unemployed. We also know it causes incredibly barriers to employment. And we also know, actually, and in 2013, a report was delivered to your previous government that said that when you mandate treatment, that can have very positive effects in terms of job search and job outcomes. So we put these three things together. We want to try something new. What about the other question Linda Burney asked, which is why have you chosen this area? Sure. So uh, there'll be three trials. Um, with the Canterbury-Bankstown area, we looked for three things. One, a high volume of new entrants to the New Start welfare system. Uh, two, a widespread of service delivery organisations on the ground who can delve into treatment uh, and uh, those types of responses. And thirdly, we looked at places where we know that there is a problem with drug use. Now, uh, this community is no orphan in this respect, very sadly, but we've got data that shows that over a six year period, the hospitalisations due to the use of amphetamines in the relevant hospital area around Canterbury Bankstown increased over 2,000%. Now that says to us as a government that we're not doing enough and what we're trying to do here, and we will measure it, is use the welfare system as a lever to mandate treatment so that people can do the best to look after themselves and get the help that they need. So Linda Burney, if Labor doesn't like this approach, uh, you heard the Minister there talk mm. about the 2,000% increase in hospitalisations due to ICE in this area, what would Labor be doing to try to deal with that? Well I've questioned some of those statistics and I know the area very well and I know the medical system in the area, but Labor's view is that, that there needs to be um, investment in programs that are proven to work, rehabilitation um, and not using punitive measures like those people on welfare. I mean, we were told initially by the government uh, through the Senate estimates pro process that the method of selecting communities would not be what the Minister has um, just just um, explained, it would be a very different method. Um, and it would, it would seem to us, when you listen to the experts, it's about investing in people, investing in rehabilitation, and that's not what this program is about. We're out of time, but it'd be good to get you both back in once we start to see some data coming in. Thank if you. You'd be happy to join us again.